Hello everybody, I'm Boaz Feiler, I'm an evolutionary astrologer and I'm here with the evolutionary astrology forecast for the week between the 10th and the 17th of November 2018. I woke up with a stupid smile this morning on my face. I don't know, everything is so crisp and clear and the sky is just innocently blue. You know that innocent blue it has sometimes in the morning? And yeah, I can't, I can't take the smirk off my face. You know, if I would have been an immature younger person, I would have said that I look like someone who last night. But I'm not going to go there. No, I'm much more mature than that. And this is not the place nor the time for such talk. But how is Jupiter in Sagittarius treating you? I find the optimism refreshing. It's like a new spirit in the air. You know, it's a scent. It's a scent you want to follow in an unknown street. An alley leading to a marketplace where you know the love of your life awaits. It's a mystery waiting to be unveiled. It's new territory in your nostrils which you want to follow. It's a sparkle which you've lost and now nostalgically see. Um, with the movements of the nodes to that very personal and true um, introverted axis of Saturn, Moon, of Capricorn, Cancer, of 10, 4, MC, IC, everything I came from. Everything I was built with. Everything I was marked with and made of. What I can build and create with those ingredients in order to bring and take my place in the society of humans. In the system. In that foreign arbitrary world outside and bring my role out so I could be an authoritative, hegemonious figure to the people around me, so I would be a pillar of support. So I would be able, in a sense, to take my past experience and adopt it into a set of rules in which I have the... Um, come on. Uh, not strictness, but discipline to abide by. That I have the discipline to abide by. Saturn is our greatest asset. It is our own experience. It formulates over the years our own set of rules. That if we are brave and disciplined, educated enough, Saturn deals with education, mature enough to follow, we are able to lead a full and happy life, balanced and sustainable, and be those pillars to ourselves and others around us. Learn, in a sense, our karmatic lesson. So this is a very important axis. It talks a lot about psychological mechanisms within us, going trine, making a trine to the 8th house from the IC, or creating a trine to the other side, to the cusp of the 12th. Understanding that we are part of this oceanic current, and this actually talks about this week's transits as well, when Mars is going to be moving into Pisces. Understanding that we are part of this oceanic current, <laughs> can you do anything, asks Neptune, dear Mars, are you able to influence anything? Is your struggle worth it? You are but a drop. I am the ocean. Yes, says Mars. You are the ocean. I am the drop. And as the ocean. You are made only of drops 
like me. I am the ocean. I am legion. And in a way, when you adopt this spiritual mind frame, and I'm sorry I'm jumping into this uh, ingress back into Pisces that Mars is making this week, because that movement that we can all experience throughout the next few weeks is a very sensitive one, is a very uh, spiritual one. We all become much more sensitive, we can get hurt much more easily, we become more melodramatic in a way, but we become more feminine and intuitive as well. And we could deal with these kinds of power losses, this feeling of being overwhelmed by this tsunami, you know, something that is much stronger, much greater, something I could never control or anticipate making me feel like I'm this drop in the ocean, like I'm this little boat in an oceanic stream. But it can be also very spiritual, very artistic, very creative. And if we connect to the higher level, to the higher vibration, then we get to the understanding of Mars that it is the ocean, that the ocean is made out of drops. And that as the ocean, our decisions, my decision as a drop, are the only thing that could ever change the waters and have ever changed the waters in the past. To the smallest, smallest, most inner actions. We're talking about Neptune, we're talking about the universal womb, we're talking about the sacred feminine, we're talking about the young male warrior meeting that embryonic fluid. Drowning in it, in a way, or incubating in it. <clears throat> and then everything matters. How much electricity and energy you spend, how much water you use, how much waste you are making, what kind of food you are eating, what kinds of products you are consuming and how much. Where do you put your investments? Who, which banks do you choose? Which companies do you support with your shopping? Everything matters, says that Mars and Pisces. For if I make the change, you change. And that's a very spiritual standpoint. And in a way, we can act collectively when Mars is in Pisces. We can become that tsunami ourselves in the highest form, you know. So, this is a very interesting week. This is a week that Venus is doing that U-turn, going from retrograde back to direct movement. She's doing that by a very sacred star, a very sacred star that talks about the sacred union between the feminine and the uh, uh, male aspects within us, Spica or Spica. We're going to talk about that. And... She does that only to see her friend Mercury doing a U-turn himself and going into retrograde. So yeah, happy times. Man, you know. Let's go down to the weekdays and see how that flows. If we're talking about this week, then the heavier days are Sunday, Monday, Tuesday up to the evening time. Remember, I'm talking in Central European time. If you are in the States, move it about seven hours before East Coast about 10 hours to Pacific time, and do the same if you are in the Pacific, in Australia, just move it ahead, <laughs> 7 to 10 hours. So, Saturday is a fun day, if you, weather permitting, go outside, enjoy it, it's a great day to be among other people, especially the evening time, 
It's a great day to enjoy yourself. If you are in a romantic time in your life, it's a wonderful day to be um, with your partner. Don't even have to go outside, you know. But with that moon in Sagittarius, you know, it's a kind of a George Michael moment saying, let's go outside. I know you want to, but you can't say yeah. Sunday, the 11th. Um, energetic day. Heavier energy, though, especially from the afternoon. Watch yourself. Don't be too obsessive. Don't be too um, dramatic. And especially don't be too judgmental. We could be bringing ourselves or other people down. Watch it out. You know, bring... Tickle that seriousness, you know, bring, bring, bring some, some, uh, a bit of a joker attitude to that day and watch it all from the side with a small smirk on your face. Tickle it. Tickle that Saturn. Um, Monday the 12th. A good day to be more objective and open-minded. It's a good day also to be dealing with anything that is under the surface that needs some depth that uh, is of psychological or sexual or intimate nature or of a hidden or taboo nature but we have to watch ourselves not to dig in too deep that day you know um, from the evening time it's a lot of fun though um, especially night time let's say evening can be still dramatic so but if we're a bit op more open-minded and more objective, this could be a really interesting time where we could get a lot of understandings. Um, and let's talk about Venus doing that U-turn by Spica. Spica sits at 24 degrees of Libra. It's considered a very ancient holy star. Um, it is held by Virgo, by the constellation Virgo. Um, at, their, at her palms, you know, at the wheat, um, Virgo holds uh, uh, wheat in her arms. And in those wheats lies Spica. So Spica has a lot to do with uh, fruition and with fertility. And Ptolemy says it is a union of Venus and Mars. And in a way, it's that assertive woman with a very hands-on approach. She has her hands on the looms, on the, on the grains. She's a down-to-earth woman. She's able to take care of what needs to be taken care of in order to sustain uh, the environment around her. She's, a, she's the assertive woman. She's the protective woman, in a sense. And she's also the nurturing male. The, uh, I wouldn't want to say maternal, I wouldn't want to say paternal, you know, but not in a domineering way. Father, you know, the nurturing male, the male that is sensitive enough to take the baby on his arms and cuddle it and, and hug it and show emotion and so on and so, so to speak. And of course, you know me, Venus is about our satisfaction creating more harmony, creating more beauty, creating more satisfaction for us in our lives from the physical plane, from our relationships with ourselves, our bodies, and others. And by adopting or addressing imbalances between the feminine and the, and the masculine within us throughout this time, we can actually get recognitions and understandings regarding the ways that we can further enhance balance, equilibrium, and satisfaction in those subjects of Venus in our lives. So Spica helps Venus gain those understandings, appreciate that fruition, that, that plentiful giveth, of, of, of that nature that we all live in and breathe in, that breath of life that we draw in, that piece of bread that we put in our mouths, that sip of water that goes down our throat.
that smile that smiles upon us, that laughter that rings in our ear. All of these are gemstones. Their light lights up our life. Without them, we are missing. Spica talks about the basic, the essential, and how recognizing the value of it, and in a way, becoming devoted to the cultivation of it, to the health of it, to the betterment of it, will make us healthy, happy, and, and, and plentiful as well. So, yeah, I'm kind of philosophic today. Woohoo! What's in this tea? No, it's not the tea. It's the morning. Um, so, yeah, Tuesday morning, watch it, you know. Watch out from being too confrontational or just unsatisfied and showing it too wildly to people around you. And don't be too rebellious. The afternoon time, evening time, let's say, not afternoon, evening time is already much nicer, much calmer. Uh, enjoy it. Tuesday night, try and enjoy it. It's, it's a great time. Uh, Wednesday is a beautiful day for a different kind of communication. You know, just <clears throat> disassembling things in your head or between uh, people in conversation and seeing things from a different angle. Uh, putting things back together to get different solutions. Um, it's a great day for new ideas and new information <coughs> and uh, new ways of communication. The 15th, Thursday. Well, 15th has a great energy in the morning. It's a Mars sextile Uranus exact, this energy. You know, that's the fresh scent that I was talking about. That's the mysterious kind of feeling of new ground in the air that we want to follow on. We, we have this enthusiasm to go and to boldly go where we never went before, you know. So on that day, this is exact. It's a wonderful day to exert that energy or just exert physical energy so it won't get blocked up, you know jog, run, do something. Um, the nighttime is wonderful. Trying to Venus from the moon. Enjoy it. Uh, great time for eating, drinking, pleasuring, being in the company of others. Uh, and Mars is moving into Pisces uh, that night. We talked about that. So I'm not going to repeat that. It's in the beginning of the video. Friday, um, the 16th, morning time, very energetic, but could be too dramatic or emotional. Uh, do try not to ask for too much, not to indulge yourself too much. Put limits to yourself. Become more objective. See yourself from the side, how you would think of yourself if you would have seen yourself from the side. And you could meet people who are a little childish on that morning as well. Communication is difficult uh, because that's the days already that Mercury stops going into retrograde. These are the most difficult days for the Mercury retrograde. Remember, a Mercury retrograde happens every three months. We do not stop our lives. We do not cease to do stuff. This is not a cease and desist order. No, Mercury is in charge of our mind frame, our thoughts, our communication, our navigation through our close environment our ideas, our left brains. And every planet in retrograde gives us a different view, a different angle. We get a much more holistic understanding of things because of it. As my colleague Yair Trubelsky says, it's a great time to accumulate and process the information that we have gained. You know, just process it. Not uh, 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 um, do anything with it if we can. Of course, we do not stop our lives. I have signed contracts for my apartment and the last apartment I was in and the one before that for the past decade, you know, 
in Mercury retrogrades. I have been for a long time in each one of them, and I enjoy them tremendously. Knock on wood, you know, until now. Knock on wood. <laughs> Another one. Um, so, and you know, and Maurice Fernandez, my astrology teacher, brought a car which he enjoyed very much and used for a lot of years on a Mercury retrograde. So we don't stop doing what we're doing. We just get to see things from a different angle. And many times it could be exciting. If we have to do something, do it. Just check all the fine print. You know, take another breath, look at it again, you know, before you actually decide something. This is a great time to process information. And because things change, Schedules change, plans change, there's mal-communication. We need to give ourselves a little bit more time when we're scheduling things, when we're you know, going on trips, when we're planning things. We have to take into account that things can change, give ourselves a little bit more maneuvering space than we usually do, and a little bit more tolerance if things do change. Um, so on Friday, Venus stops and starts moving directly. Again, when a planet stops and, and does that change of motion, these are the times we can most feel the retrograde, both when it enters and leaves it. So this could be a very Venusian day. But again, we have to put limits to that Venus in order for it to be uh, um, efficient for us and beneficial for us. And there is a sextile to Saturn, and not long after that, on Friday night, which really balances things out and gives that maturity that we need. I just hope it reaches us uh, uh, soon enough so we don't, uh, I don't know, eat too much cake on Friday morning at brunch, you know, or something. <laughs> um, Saturday, the 17th, Mercury starting its move backwards so communication it's not a great day to go on trips on uh, and if you are going be flexible know that plans can change it's a great day to you know go to a gallery see a movie see a show lay on the couch stay in bed paint meditate good for artistic feminine um, spiritual activities even nature is wonderful on that day but it's it's a bit you know it's not that great for going around for communication or in energy in, a, in, a, in an energy sense Saturday night however we get an energy boost <coughs> and that would be fun 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 just again limits 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 are important when um, Mars is in Pisces <laughs> and the moon is in Pisces and the moon is on Neptune and sextiling Pluto. It's a great mixture. Anyway, that's what I had to tell you. I want to tell you as well that my site is undergoing reconstruction. Everything is going to be automated. We're working on it. Soon it's going to be up and I'm going to tell you and you could join my groups and courses or consultations just by going online and doing it yourself. And that would be a blessing for me. That would be a blessing because I hate it. Uh, you know, that I need to run around and, uh, and ask people if they are coming to the course or not coming to the course, if they are going to the group or not going to the group, just not cu cut out for it. Um, and this would be a wonderful way uh, to help myself and hopefully see more of you. So I want to thank you for taking these videos and sharing them and commenting on them and liking them because they expose these videos to more people. Thank you. And, of course, for consultations or any questions you might have about astrology, free to contact me. I hope you're going to have a magical time that would be very fruitful in your life. Thank you for listening. This is Boaz Feiler. Live long and prosper.